Welcome back to Consecutive Day 858 of a Diary of a Rumpreneur. Please do give this a subscribe and a share as it's part of a fundraiser to save the lives of children by attempting the ultimate ultra marathon. All the information is in the link in the comments below. Thank you for your support as always and let's get started. So, consecutive day 858 of a diary of a rumpreneur. Um, if you just bear with me a second, because I'm just about to go past a horse, and um, I don't want to be making too much noise when I do so, in case I get a horse kick into the back of my head. So just uh, bear with me a second as I go past this horse. It's only a little one, but they've still got pretty powerful legs to say the least. So, oh yeah, a bit of traffic down this country lane tonight. But anyway, so uh, today I want to talk to you about the Apple Watch Ultra. So, uh, being a an Apple geek, um, when the new watch, the Apple Watch Ultra was released, it was uh, super exciting because uh, obviously I do a lot of endurance um, exercise. This is one massive <laughs> ultra marathon ultimately that. Um, the one criticism of the Apple Watch 7 that I had before, and it's now we've released the Apple Watch 8 alongside the Apple Watch Ultra, the one criticism always was battery life. Um, they even introduced street, uh, sorry, sleep tracking, uh, I think last year or the year before, but when the battery life is so poor, when I say poor, you get a day's worth of charge before you have to charge overnight. So it wasn't really suitable for sleep tracking. Well, the Apple Watch Ultra, is uh, significantly more expensive, double the price. However, uh, I think £849 pounds in the UK compared to 479 for the cellular version of the uh, the larger version of the Apple Watch 8. Um, it's 49 millimeter uh, face, which I'll try and zoom in on here. It's uh, it's massive. It looks really really chunky and aggressive on your on your on your wrist. Um, it also feels incredibly comfortable. There's quite a significant increase in weight, but you wouldn't notice it because the straps are so well made that they, uh, they just feel really comfortable. I've got the, the trail loop on, uh, which is uh, for endurance running. So it's, it's probably similar to the sport, the sport band uh, or sport loop, I think they called it before. It's the kind of material based uh, sport loop, uh, but it is uh, a little bit more um, rugged and able to take the additional weight of the of the watch to hold it secure on your wrist which is really important so the first thing i'd say is that if you've got really small wrists it might not be for you i mean i have pretty small wrists but it probably just about looks okay on my wrist any larger it'd probably be too big so uh that's a consideration so like i say um as a, as a male i have relatively small small wrists if you're got quite big arms or big wrists uh no drama if you're a female, uh, unless you've got big wrists, you might find it uh, a little bit uncomfortable. So that's uh, just something to consider. Um, but it's got 36 hours of battery life as standard uh, with a low power mode about to be released, which will extend it to 60 hours, which is huge. Um, what it enables me to do is to finally use the sleep tracking. And uh, that's something I'm really getting into at the moment because productivity wise, if you can wake up and feel recharged and refreshed, then it's, uh, it's only going to supercharge you. I was looking at possibly getting the Aura Ring for that reason alone, but I'm thinking initially that the Apple Watch Ultra now, with a third-party piece of, of uh, a third-party app called Auto Sleep, which you have to pay for, it's 4.49. I'll do a, a review on that once I've been using it a bit longer. Um, I think the conjunction of those two gives me all the data. I also use a heart watch as well which is uh, goes really deep on, on heart rate and uh, I think it's given me all the stats and data that I need uh, which is uh, super cool and the idea is, is to get a really good sleep pan the idea is, is to start um, winding down before I go to bed making sure I get a good night's sleep and then you do, it, does, it works out your readiness score in the morning which is a combination of heart rate metrics alongside the sleep, the quality of sleep you just had to give you a score. And um, it uses 
a, a metric called uh, H. RV, heart rate variability, I think it stands for heart, heart rate variance. And what that does is it, it's the, the fluctuation between your heart rate as you, as you move around throughout the day, um, how it changes based on typical activity or waking up, and it gives you a score. And I haven't really explained it very well, but what it ultimately measures is stress on the body. So if you've, if you've had a bad night's sleep, your heart rate variance might be lower or higher depending on how it, how it calculates for you. Um, but the idea is, is you want your heart rate variance to trend upwards over the course of time, which um, ultimately shows that your heart is, is more comfortable. And it, it's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good metric to, to identify overtraining. I'm not super familiar with it yet, so once I learn more about it, I'll be able to explain it in more detail in a future episode. But um, that readiness score basically gives me an indication of how I'm going to feel for the day. And so far it's been pretty good. I know I only tried it for a day, but um, the score it gave me was um, about 69%, which is just into the okay category. Um, ideally above 75 is what I'm aiming for. And I, it just sets expectations. If you wake up and you feel rotten and you've got so much to do, if, you're, if your readiness score, this is how I'm looking at it. If I had a really bad night's sleep, I'll lower my expectations for the day, so I still get the most important stuff done, but but no more, because I don't want to push myself or strain myself. Whereas if I've had a really good night's sleep and I'm feeling super productive, I'll push myself a lot further, and the readiness score can obviously give me that data. So um, sleep tracking is something it's amazing for. Also, the GPS is far better on the Apple Watch Ultra, um, significantly better than the, the Apple Watch 8 and, and 7. And um, added to that, the heart rate monitoring is slightly enhanced. Uh, it's, just, it's just a slightly bigger and better version of the Apple Watch 8, really, but it's got some cool uh, functionality um, for the endurance athlete or the, or the adventurer. Um, it's got a siren installed into it, which if you can hear from about 500 metres away, which is unbelievable for a watch. Um, so if you're lost in a mountain or hurt, anybody nearby should be able to hear. Um, some people say you can hear up to a mile away which is uh, an amazing safety feature. Um, so yeah, first impressions are, it's gonna be brilliant for endurance, not having to charge overnight, able to use sleep tracking, the bigger face, the, the brighter screen. Um, it's got more, it's got um, a wayfinder and a back tracking facility, so you can plot s- spots on your route, so you can find your way back to them easily, and the back track enables you to trace the exact route you made if you're, if you're going into the wilderness, which is, um, which is super cool. So um, really cool for kind of adventurers as well. So um, first impressions is I absolutely love it. I think it looks immense. It feels immense. Uh, it also does, uh, it's good for scuba divers as well, down to 40 meters as a depth tracker as well, which is, uh, so it's really, really rugged piece of equipment. And uh, the early impressions are amazing. So, uh, but I probably would say that because I'm very biased towards Apple products, but just how they seamlessly work together. I'm wearing the uh, AirPods uh, Pro second generation as well, and they are super cool addition to the Apple kit as well. So uh, I'm fully teched up. I've even taken off my my arm heart rate monitor due to the accuracy of the Apple Watch Ultra as well, which is another perk. So um, that's all I'm gonna say today. I'll probably do a secondary review on this, and I've been using it for a month or two. Um, but at the moment, first impressions are amazing. So, uh, any questions, drop me a line. I'll respond to everyone. Remember, this is part of the Rumpreneur Challenge. So it's a fundraiser. So do give us a subscribe and a share as we're on a mission to save the lives of children by attempting the ultimate ultra marathon. Uh, thank you, as always. Stay positive, stay happy. And I'll see you again tomorrow.